All right, so we're going to continue along here um, with the formulaic part. And I call this formulaic, this is my word for it. The Save the Cat sequence is kind of like the hero's journey in that it's very formulaic. Um, apparently there are 15 beats and there are three acts. You probably have heard it in English class, they talk about the three act play. A lot of TV shows are even done on three acts because you have commercial breaks. You know, so you, you do for about five or 10 minutes, take a commercial break, do five or 10 minutes, do a commercial break, come back for five or 10 minutes and the show's done. You know, so three acts kind of works for a lot of different things. And, and, you know, you get that repetition into things. Usually you have the introduction and build things up, the main story happens, and then the climax and it crashes down. So when Snyder published his book in 2005, it was as if an explosion ripped through Hollywood. The book offered something previous screenplay screenplay, excuse me, guru tomes did not. Instead of a broad overview of how the string story fits together, his book broke down the three-act structure into a detailed beat sheet. Fifteen key story beats, things that keep the music going, keep the story going, pivotal events that had to happen. And then he gave each of those beats a name, and he gave them a screenplay page number. Given that each of a screenplay, each page of a screenplay is expected to equal about a minute of film, this makes Snyder's Guide essentially a minute-to-minute -minute movie formula. And we're going to focus on the five highlighted ones here. We're not going to go into all of these, but I do want to overview them really quickly. So you have open an image, the theme is stated, the setup, you have a catalyst, the thing that makes things happen. You know, for Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, it's probably the moment his aunt and uncle get killed. Um, for Harry Potter, it's probably when he gets the owl letters. You know, these things that happen. The debate, and then it says break into two. And I don't want, that's the main reason I want to talk about this. So break into two doesn't mean break into two parts. It means go into act two. Go into the second part. Uh, B story is usually like a subplot. Like, you know, you know, Harry Potter is about Harry Potter. But what about Hermione and her fitting into school in the Sorcerer's Stone? You know, or what about, you know, what's going on with Ron and his issues or something like that? You know, what's going on with the other characters? There's usually a second story that goes along too. Fun and games, Quidditch. And then we get to the midpoint. Uh, the bad guys close in, all is lost, dark night of the soul. And then we get break into three. And break into three, again, does not mean to split into three parts. It means get into act three. You get to the finale and you have the final image. It goes about here. But we're going we're to focus mostly on the five that we see here. Sorry, let me get my cursor back to where I needed to be. Um, so the act one is your pages one to 30. Um, this is where your catalyst, your break into two goes. Act two is pages 31 to 90. Uh, midpoint and break into three and then act three pages 91 to 120 is your finale you know so you know roughly 30 30 30 pages or so act two is probably going to be the majority of what you're looking at here uh, so the catalyst is the inciting incident that sparks the hero journey what happens to change the course of events the events are no longer normal they're now worthy of a story and um, the example that's given here is the lion king and can you think of the scene that would be the catalyst? The, the, it's the, the incident that causes Simba, the main character, to go on a story? I think we all know what scene that is, don't we? Yeah, that scene. So, you know, there's, there's a moment where things changed for young Simba in his life. And he has to go off and meet new companions and begin the rest of his hero's journey. Um, break into two. Uh, the hero begins their journey and enters a new world. Now, I'm not exactly sure what part the Wizard of Oz was intended for this. For me, I think it really is this sequence here. So this is after the, the house lands in Kansas. And you have to remember, too, this movie was also big because of its theatrical contributions. This is a movie that's in color. It's like the first movie to be have any color, like, like official, actual, real color, not just colored panes of um, film. And we see, actually, literally, Dorothy crosses the threshold from her black and white Kansas ordinary life into the colored world of Oz. Like, they're literally, I mean, you physically see her doing this. Um, it, I don't see it could be any more obvious anywhere other way. You could possibly argue the tornado does that, but um, I think this is the moment that we see there. And I put an animated GIF, I say GIF, I know, animated GIF, animated GIF, um, there of this, because to me that, you need to see that it actually happened, and a still image would not do justice here. The midpoint is the point where things change. You have the same goal, but you need a new way to get there. So, for example, if you think of Aladdin, um, he, you know, he's trying to win the princess, 
you know, whatever, a false victory, a false defeat um, that raises the stakes. I would argue that for Aladdin, it's not particularly this sequence. I would say it's more when Jafar takes the lamp back from Aladdin. And so now he's got to get the lamp back in addition to winning the girl. I would argue more for that, maybe-ish. But I don't know. It really depends on what exactly how you want to analyze this. There's, there could be some argument either way, I would think. Again, I'm not a... I always hate when the English teachers are like, no, it's not this, it's that. And it's like, no, I think there's a good argument for that, too. Uh, break into three. The moment when just after all seems lost, the hero finds their inner strength. Uh, the Dark Knight Rises. This is the third of the Batman movies by Christopher Nolan. And um, I think the sequence here they're trying to represent is when Bruce is in the prison and he manages to climb out of the prison. And he, he has been trying, he has been healing, he has been training, he has been trying to better himself, and then he finally is able to do it. And you really do see that he is physically, as well as mentally, a different person. A prepared person. A ready person. To do what needs to be done. And then finally you get to the finale, the climax, the ultimate showdown between good and evil in Beauty and the Beast arguably the moment where Gaston has stormed the castle um, and is fighting with the beast um, and they're up on the rooftop in the rain which in itself is you gotta admit I mean it's animated but it's gotta be you know it's pretty intense um, pretty intense sequence there but um, that's kind of the different parts of the save the cat storyline so kind of similar to hero's journey not the same thing uh, that I want to get into all right, and then we're going to get into log lines. So I'm actually, again, I'm going to stop the video here because I want to keep this segment separate. And uh, we'll be coming back. We'll be back in just a second.